Welcome to the 2022-2023 Science Olympiad season. I hope everyone is excited to build bridges again this year and hopefully attend in-person competitions. The Division B and C rules are very different this year, and this video, at least the design parts of it, will be specific to Division B. I'm going to show you details of a bridge that would be extremely competitive in any state or even at nationals, but I'm also going to talk about why you might not want to build it. If that sounds crazy, stay tuned. Before I get into the details of the bridge, I want to talk a bit about why I have this channel at all and why I don't think it hurts the competitive landscape by giving away secrets or eliminating the challenge of this event. Last year, I showed a Division B bridge on my channel that scored 2865 back in December of 2021. Six months later at Nationals, that same bridge would have placed third or fourth with the average score at Nationals being 1527. So either not many people are watching my videos or it's extremely hard to duplicate a result by just seeing the design. Honestly, it's a bit of both, but I'm convinced that being guided by a good design is only about 40% of the challenge of this event and is also the most unfair from team to team. What do I mean by unfair? The typical starter design templates put out by the Science Olympiad folks are not competitive. Historically, the only way teams learned about what competitive designs looked like were by attending invitationals and observing others. That is great, and I still highly recommend doing that today. But what if you live in an area or even a state where there aren't any great build teams? You'd have a good chance of never seeing a highly competitive device, even if you tried. And while the design aspect is only about 40% of what is needed to compete at the highest level, it's the most important by far. You could be the best builder in the world with access to the best materials, but if you have a bad design, you will not be competitive. There is a reason why the same schools have the best build results year after year. It's not because somehow their incoming sixth graders magically have the best designs. It's because there is a coach or a teacher that is able to pass along historic design information from year to year. That is good, and I encourage that to continue. But it's really unfair to new teams or teams without that ability, as it's pretty much impossible to break that cycle in a single season or even two or three. Which gets me to the primary purpose of this channel. The idea is that every year I will try and present good designs for the various devices which will allow any team that wants to put in the effort to be able to compete at the highest level. I think that makes things more fair for the majority of teams without access to expert help and doesn't change the elite teams as they don't really need my help anyway. Okay, sorry for the long rant, but I wanted to explain more about where I'm coming from with showing these builds. Here is what most of you are here to see. This was my first build of the season, and as it turns out, it might also be my last. It was just 3.39 grams and held a full load of 15.3 kilograms for a competition score of 5,900 and an actual efficiency of 4512. That is a pretty incredible score and is probably the most impressive Science Olympiad device I've ever built. So how was I able to build this on my very first try? Some of it was luck for sure, but a lot of it wasn't. Remember when I said about having historic knowledge from previous seasons is a huge advantage? It turns out that this year's Division B rules are very similar to what they were in 2015. The only important design difference is the 15 centimeter loading block height requirement this year. Last year, I spent an entire month and built over 20 bridges to those old rules for my six part advanced optimization video series. I will put a link to those below in the description. I can't stress enough that everything in those videos directly applies to this year and I'd highly recommend watching them to get a good background on bridge building in general. I basically took my best bridge from that series, build number 14 for those keeping track, and directly adapted it to this year's rules, and this bridge was the result. Here are my notes for the build so you can directly compare this to what I did earlier in the series if you'd like. I will show the full testing sequence and high speed footage for this bridge, but I first wanted to talk a bit about why you might not want to duplicate this bridge exactly. You might think that's a crazy idea. Why wouldn't you want to duplicate this very high score and win all your competitions? The reason is that this bridge is on the extreme edge of what is possible. 
meaning that even if I rebuilt this exact same bridge, I'd estimate that there would be about a 50% chance it would fail before holding 15 kilograms. With the 2015 rules, that would be no big deal, but that highlights the other very important rule change for this year compared to back then, the extra 5 kilogram bonus for holding all 15 kilograms. Remember when I said that the design is about 40% of what is necessary to win? In a year without the bonus rule, I'd estimate that the remaining 60% is split about evenly between build skills and materials. Materials. When the 5 kilogram bonus rule is in place like it is this year, and it has been for the past couple years, there is another very important aspect to consider, and that is competition strategy. It's so important that I'd give it equal weight with build skills and materials. What do I mean by competition strategy? As a team, you need to decide how much risk you are willing to take for a given competition. For example, take this bridge that weighed 3.39 grams and held just over 15 kilograms. There would have been no way to pretest this device to guarantee it held 15 kilograms on test day, and my estimate is about 50% success. So, 50% chance it holds everything and you score 5,900 like it did here, but also 50% chance that it holds, say, 14.7 kilograms, and your score is 4336, which is a significant drop. Here's a quick spreadsheet that shows things pretty clearly. At the top is the 3.39 gram bridge, and each additional row adds 0.15 gram to the bridge, which makes it stronger and makes the percent chance it holds the entire weight higher. In this example, the team that chooses to build a 4.59 gram bridge with a 90% chance of holding the entire weight would beat the team who brought the 3.39 gram bridge if theirs only held 14.7 kilograms. Even if these percentages and weights aren't completely accurate, there is definitely a trend like this in play and teams that are able to build at this level need to be thinking about this because it isn't possible to make a 3.39 gram bridge have a 100% chance of holding the entire weight. Every team has different levels of build skills and access to materials, so it would be a very good idea for teams to see how reproducible their bridges are to get a good understanding on what those percentages are at different masses. The 5 kilogram bonus rule definitely adds another level of complexity and challenge, even for the most experienced build teams. Finally, here is the testing sequence for the bridge. Here it is on the scale right before testing at 3.39 grams. If you are new to my channel, this is my testing table. I am pouring sand in a funnel off the left side of the screen, and it's going down the PVC pipe into the bucket. I custom built a loading cell which dynamically measures the mass as it's being loaded and retains the maximum value when the device fails. This means that it's not important to stop the sand from entering the bucket after failure like it is during normal competition. The display is measuring the load of everything below the load cell hook, which doesn't account for the dead weight above, which includes the loading block and chain. In this case, that mass is 149 grams, which gets added to the final display weight for the total mass held. If you listen carefully, you will hear a pretty loud creaking sound at around 14 kilograms. That is a big clue that damage has occurred and things are going to fail soon. If you were pre-testing this bridge, any test over 14 kilograms would have damaged it. Here's the high speed footage for the test. It was shot at 4185 frames per second and the playback is shown at 50% speed. Even at this extremely slow speed, it's hard to tell which cross bracing failed first, but the fact that the entire left side basically exploded together means that it was a well balanced build. Because the legs and primary tension members survived, if you're looking to optimize even further, that's what I would focus on. I hope you enjoyed seeing this bridge and that it helps you get a jump start on this season's competitions. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any specific questions. Thanks for watching and good luck this season.